The last couple of weeks, I have been working really hard on mapping out what my personal goals are, um, some of the priorities for my two small businesses that I have, and just a long project list of things that I would like to get started working on as far as making some home improvements and improvements to the property as well. And so that's kind of what you see me doing here. This is kind of my process. I'm very visual. And so I like to make lists that I can hang up at my desk. And that way it's right in front of me all year long. And if I ever find myself with some free time and I'm bored, I can just look at that list and figure out which one of those projects I want to tackle. So I made a separate list for the house and property goals, my business goals, and then also I have several personal goals. So you see them all hanging there above my desk in the office. And then I just wanted to walk around the property with you and kind of point out some of those things that we're going to be working on. What you're looking at right here is my new to me garden shed. It's a shed that has been on the property for a very long time and it's sitting empty and so Kyle and I decided it would make a really good shed for all of my garden tools and we're going to put it on some skids and move it up closer to the garden, put some fresh paint on it and I think it's going to end up working really well. I'm going to paint it white and I just kind of like the way it looks with it being white. The house is white, the wash house is white, the newer buildings are white so it just makes sense to have it all be cohesive. And I'm also going to hang my barn quilt on this. Um, one of my really good friends, her mom paints barn quilts and she painted me one for a wedding gift and I'm really excited to get it hung up. And so that's definitely on the top of my list. Now this building here is an old uh, mobile chicken coop and we are actually going to work on getting that more functional. It wasn't super functional with the trailer that it was built on, but we have some modifications that we're going to make. And I'm so sorry I'm swinging the camera back and forth. I think I was yelling at my dog. Um, but it's going to be a really good mobile chicken coop. I do plan on getting several um, new birds for the homestead flock that will lay multiple colored eggs. The chickens that we currently have, they just lay brown eggs, and while they taste the same, um, I really like the aesthetics of kind of a mixed flock and some different colored eggs. So for no other reason than I can and I want to, we're going to get some more chickens. And this tree here, I talk about it a little bit in the video, but it is dead and it is coming down. We, um, we purchased a high tunnel and, well, I say we purchased, Kyle purchased a high tunnel for me as a wedding gift. And so we got to get this tree taken down and this old, um, shed kind of moved out of the way so that we can get the high tunnel put in place. And then as we kind of head back closer to the house, this is the really old chicken coop. And while there is functionally nothing wrong with this chicken coop, it has definitely seen better days. It's very old and we haven't quite decided what we want to do with it. We know in a few years it is coming down. When we build our new wash house, it will have to come down. But um, in the meantime, we're trying to decide if it's worth the money and time to spruce it up a little bit or if we're just going to deal with it and rebuild a new one in a few years. But as you can see, it's working perfectly fine housing the chickens. It keeps them dry, keeps them out of the wind and rain and all of the elements. So they're perfectly fine in there. And then as we head back over, this is the wash house. I did mention that it is our plan to tear it down in a few years, but we're not quite there. Um, my dog's kennel is also behind this wash house and it blocks a lot of the wind from the north for him. His house is very well built and insulated, but I do want to paint his house again. It really needs another coat of paint this year and I want to do some mulching and a um, little bit of landscaping around his kennel just because it's aesthetically pleasing and that's just kind of the way that I am. I like things to look really pretty and then we're also planning on either painting the wash house or getting some very inexpensive value brand type um, vinyl siding to put on it. 
within the next five to 10 years, we do want to tear that building down and rebuild. It really needs to be rebuilt. Um, and we have several ideas for ways of making it more functional for us. Um, but in the meantime, we do utilize this building for quite a lot. We process our meat birds in here and I use it as a wash pack station for the produce. But we do want to spruce it up and make it look a little bit nicer. We have a lot of trash and everything from the move that we need to get cleaned up. And then in this store here is where I'm currently storing all of my garden tools and seed starting supplies and some of my containers for gardening. All of that is going to get moved out of there and into the garden shed that we just looked at. So that'll clear up some space in there. And then as we head back towards the main door, I'll show you the inside of the wash house and kind of our plans for it. Now this building has become an absolute catch-all during our moving process. And so one of the things on my list for January and February is to get this building cleaned up and cleaned out and organized better. And then also just needs to be um, dusted and swept and sanitized. We do sanitize this before and after. We harvest our meat birds every single time. So we do keep it pretty clean, but it is an older building. And so it just needs a little bit more tender, loving care. And this is where most of our freezers are. We do also have a little bit of storage in here. And then I stored some of our squash in here for the winter um, because we didn't have any space in the cellar for them. And then this little area right outside the wash house is just a little triangular piece of grass between the sidewalks. And I want to put some rocks around the border and fill that in with soil and mulch and do some different flowers and landscaping in there. And while we're talking about landscaping, I just really want to spruce up the whole house. A couple years ago, I built this little planter and it was really easy. I'd love to build another one for this patio. And then I want to get this, um, the garden beds that are on the front of the house, I want to extend them all the way around both sides of the house and do a lot more landscaping with some really pretty low maintenance perennial flowers and just really give the house the colorful pop in the spring and summer. And then this is the front of the house. One of the things that has been really bothering us is fact that the house needs power washed and it's starting to get really noticeable. Um, Kyle has kept up with the power washing over the last few years, but we did not get to it this year. And so we really need to do that in 2024. And then I want to maybe paint this porch again. It would be the same color. Just put a new coat of paint on it. Give it a little bit of a sprucing up. This bench needs to be fixed. And then the church pew, I just want to paint black so that it kind of blends in with everything else. And I think that will kind of help bring that porch together. Now, eventually, we would love to extend this porch and have a covered wraparound porch all the way from one side of the house to the other. However, that is simply not in the budget for the next few years. That's probably a project closer to um, 10 to 15 years down the line. So for the time being, I just want to give this porch a little bit of a facelift and make it a warm and inviting place to be. And then as we head around this side of the house, like I mentioned, I want to extend these flower beds that are on the front side of the house and I want them to go all the way around um, and just kind of be one cohesive flower bed. And as we're kind of rounding the corner of the house, this is another one of our side entrances. This is where the sun porch or sunroom is, and I just think it would be really nice to be able to look out and see really bright, beautiful colors. You can see I do have a few little landscaping and architectural pieces in there, but um, I really just want to make it really cohesive around the entire house as far as the landscaping goes. And this is my grandfather's picnic table. It needs an absolute facelift. We do have a board to replace one of the rotten boards and then I wanna paint it. I will most likely paint it white just to blend in with everything else in the house. And I'd love to put something underneath of it like mulch or gravel just to kind of keep your feet out of the chiggers. Here in the country, we do have a lot of chiggers and so just wanna keep it a little bit more comfortable. And as we head inside the sun porch here, 
We really want to get some some sort of window treatment on all of these windows. Um, window treatments are pretty expensive and after remodeling the majority of the house and getting married and Christmas and all of that, we just don't have the money right now. But it is on the list as well as the floor in here. The old carpet is still in here and we planned on already ripping it out and putting more um, of a hard surface flooring in there, um, but we just didn't get to it. So that's on the list. This is a closet underneath the stairs that we want to get cleaned out. It's housing a lot of our construction stuff in it still, but this will become a cleaning closet. So we want to get this cleaned out and a little bit more functional, get some shelving hung up, get all of the trim work and everything put back where it's supposed to go. All of this trim you're seeing is actually supposed to be hung in the house. We just haven't gotten that far yet. So that is also on the list. Kyle also is getting ready to switch this breaker box out with a newer one. One of the breakers is really weak and keeps breaking, and so he did actually just go out and buy all of the stuff that he needed to get it replaced. Um, but again, we just haven't gotten that far. We've been incredibly busy, and um, it just hasn't happened. Another thing that I really want to do is I want to really clean up this beautiful trim work that's throughout the house. It got really dusty and dirty and gross when we were doing the construction, and I just want to scrub a lot of that grime off of all of the trim, the baseboards, the around the doors, everything needs to be really scrubbed. I'm editing this video and I realized I did not film anything for a transition between talking about the inside of the house and then moving out to some of the work that we're already starting on for the garden expansion. So this is that. Basically, I'm done inside the house and I want to show you kind of what we're working on for the garden. Of course, there will be several more videos to come on all of these projects that we're working on inside and outside of the house, but this video is just kind of a general overview for what you're going to be seeing on this channel in 2024. So let's head out to the garden. Okay, so we're right over here on the back side of where the garden is. Um, this east fence over here, the plan is to put about an eight foot gate right in here and we're gonna run three strand high tensile electric wire, um, basically straight back and then over to the fence over there. Right about in between where these two black cows are, there's a post, basically run it straight over there. And we're going to make that the pumpkin and melon patch, as well as a small fruit tree orchard. And uh, so instead of just plowing all the ground in, we're letting the heifers, uh, these are the replacement heifers, we're letting them graze on it for a couple of days, get a little bit of goodness out of this, and then we will start working on that. So just wanted to kind of show you what it looks like beforehand. And then again, this is the main garden area. We're gonna move the asparagus bed over here. Right now, it's right over there behind that tree. That tree is coming out. Asparagus bed will be moved over here. The garden will be expanded out this way a little bit. And then we'll walk over here. It's gonna come all the way down to that little stake we have driven in the ground up here. The front half here is going to end up getting tilled and turned into the cut flower garden and that will remain the main vegetable garden. So we'll come all the way to this stake here. Quite a bit of extra, uh, probably 25 more feet, 20 more feet, something like that. And then we'll go straight from this post all the way over to another post that we have and this is I've not actually measured it, but probably 50 or 60 feet. So the garden will go from basically 25 by 60 to about 50 by 60. So it's going to double this space here. And we're going to come to here. And then straight up. So it's going to be pretty big. And I'm super excited. We also have plans of moving the clothesline so that it's not under that tree. 
because birds will poop on your clothes. So that's not ideal. So when we get that tree taken out and the asparagus bed moved, we're gonna move the clothesline along the back side of the garden there. And we're going to expand on the swing, put a slide. And my thought, and I don't know when this would happen, is right in here, I wanna build an outdoor kitchen that's just right off of the garden and some really pretty landscaping leading up to it. And then in the middle over there would be a small window greenhouse for starting plants. Our high tunnel is going back over there behind that tree. That's part of why we're taking that tree out so soon to put the high tunnel in, which I hadn't told you anything about, but we are gonna have a high tunnel right over there. And uh, that will be for growing purposes. And the window greenhouse that's gonna go over here will be for seed starting purposes. So Kyle has actually already started working on our list. This is our compost bay, um, our compost bin. We only have one right now because that's all we need, um, but we do plan to build a few more. And then Kyle also went ahead and started plowing in the garden over here. And so you're seeing him basically double the garden space that we have. Right now he is using the plow um, and that's a great way to start if it's not been tilled in before, which most of this area had never been tilled in. And then we will run back over this entire space with a till attachment on the tractor and then it will be ready for me to start making the beds and get the walkways and all of that worked out. Now, I have said it in many videos before, I'm a huge fan of no-till, and I totally see the value of no-till. Um, however, I need to get this garden going for this year, and it had never been worked, and I don't have the money or the resources to do no-till from scratch for the first year. So we are tilling this in, and then it is my goal to work really, really diligently to be as minimal tillage as possible until I eventually get to a no-till system. It takes time and I just, you can do it quickly and in that first year, but I don't have the money and resources to bring in that amount of compost or, you know, different amendments. I, I just can't do that. So right now we are tilling and working in the soil but like I said, it is an ultimate goal of ours to move towards a no-till system. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed getting a glimpse into our goals and priorities for 2024. And I hope you'll stay tuned and watch as we work towards accomplishing those goals.